This week on Hunting Full. We decided on one specific animal. Uh, it was about four o'clock in the afternoon. We went after that animal. Bedded down about 100 yards in front of us. Join Albert Finney as he goes on an exciting quest in the Arizona desert for a monster mule deer. North of the Colorado River lies the vast and varied terrain of the Arizona Strip. With rolling hills and grassy stretches and rocky terrain, these stalking lands play host to some of the biggest mule deer in the world. Proven to be one of the most sought after hunting destinations in North America. However, you must tackle these grounds with the right preparation and info to ensure you come home with a trophy as the deer are scarce and the country is some of the most desolate in North America. Albert Finney, a member of Hunt and Full, Fire hole. has been applying for this tag for 15 years and has finally gotten the opportunity to go after the icon of the West. Albert grew up in Chester, New York, 60 miles north of the big city. With his father as a primary influence, he spent most of his childhood hunting the forest and pines for partridge, rabbits, and other small game. His first taste of out-of-state hunting came from a Texas deer hunt, an experience that would ignite his passion for conquering new terrain and species. Albert now owns a general contracting business that his father started over 60 years ago in Orange County, New York. He is also on the board of directors for the Eva Finney Fund, an organization named after one of his daughters that fundraises to cure a developmental disorder called Rett Syndrome. As a member of Hunt and Fool for over a decade, Albert has been studying the Arizona Strip for years. He's referenced every Arizona edition of the Hunt and Fool magazine since he joined in order to ensure his success rate. For this trip, he also brought along good friend and accomplished guide, John Sorson. Armed with the knowledge and strategies available through his Hunt and Fool membership and having the right crew by his side, he's ready to take this hunt head on. So join us as we trek over the expansive hills of the breathtaking Arizona Strip on a journey 16, 16 years, years in the making. making. Hunting encompasses every part of your life. You plan. You research. You map out every last detail. And when your drive for hunting is everything you do, you then become a hunting fool. Albert Feeney from Campbell Hall, New York. Been trying to get this tag for Arizona 13B for uh, 15 years now. Lucky for me, I drew it this year. As soon as I knew that I drew the tag, I uh, had to make some phone calls and find out who I could use as a guide. Coming from New York, it's uh, not realistic for me to hunt on my own. I don't have the time to scout, and so I've heard Clay Bundy's name a few times. Clay Bundy, I've got a guide service business called Clay Bundy Outfitters. We guide on the Arizona Strip for uh, mule deer, sheep, and animals. I um, spoke to Clay, seemed like a real straightforward guy, and whatever he told you was gonna be the truth. After meeting, Clay and Albert 
came up with a game plan. He suggested that uh, we hunt really, really hard. He said, you know, let's give that a shot for a few days. And if that didn't work, we'd go move on to some, uh, some other animals that were in the area. At first light, the team spots a few mule deer and Albert's expectations start to swell. My expectations were pretty high. You know, reading magazines, seeing articles, you know, you, all those publications that are out, you see the big deer. So you, you're forced to put your expectations pretty high. This area is the giant uh, area for mule deer. These are the big boys, everybody knows it. Arizona, 13B, 13A, you know, the strip is just big, big deer. Just passed a couple of does. We're sitting on top of a point where we can see quite a distance. See if we can find one moving before they start bedding down. Huntley Fool is brought to you by Matthews Archery. Catch us if you can. Huskama. If you're not the lead dog, the view never changes. Red Rock Precision. The ultimate long-range shooting solution. And Hunt and Fool. Your complete hunting resource. This segment is brought to you by Auto Farm. Fun, simple, and transparent. Your personal guide to your next ride. Hunt and Fool member Albert Finney is hunting with Guy Clay Bundy on the famous Arizona Strip. High expectations from a 15 year long tag application has Albert itching to pull the trigger. With the first day bringing lots of movement, the team sets out to find the big one. Trying to find a deer here. There's a big wide deer that's been here for two or three years. That just tremendous wide, double, double eye guards on both sides. There's some water right underneath here that he's hit. There's a couple reasons why there's a lot of big mule deer there. But to get a big mule deer, you got to have age and right kind of weather conditions to, for feed. And the Arizona game of fish keep the numbers down so that the, the deer can get the right age to get mature and have great antlers. Albert and Clay keep their eyes on a potential 4x4 in the valley, but the Arizona Strip is a large unit and requires covering a lot of ground and glassing to yield a mature buck. Well, I think we'll just we'll go back, stay on this ridge, and just keep glassing as we go. Um, With the last legal light falling on the horizon, a brighter tomorrow shines on in in the minds of Albert and Clay, hoping to find a big buck to harvest in the morning. So I met Clay in St. George, Utah. We headed out to camp, and the road from St. George to the Bundy Ranch is basically just a dirt road it's about 60 miles from here and there's really nothing between here and there and when we arrived at camp it was uh, a sight to see you know we, we had upwards of 20 people you know some of the other outfitters I spoke to um, you know they were dealing with tent camps and Clay had one of the very few houses out there run by solar power we had showers had great meals and uh, the company was fantastic being that we're hunting close to home today we're getting back in for breakfast, using up whatever's in the kitchen as far as part of left, last night's dinner and some omelets and some sour bread. After breakfast, Clay tells Albert of a location where a large buck was spotted earlier in the week. Albert, now joined by John, a longtime friend and avid hunter, head to the area where the buck was last spotted. Very good deer. 
Yeah, no patch. Yeah, come left. We do glass a lot. We try to go to a, a high spot in the morning and evening when it's good glassing and the deer up moving around and, and try to get a look at the deer. You know, we're, we're looking a mile, mile and a half away trying to find deer. Albert's friend John believes the buck spotted is pushing 190 inches. The rest of the crew isn't so optimistic. Albert reluctantly passes on the potential shooter and can't help but think about the old saying, don't pass the first day on what you would take on the last. Did you know that every Hunt and Fools member receives a monthly magazine filled to the brim with exclusive hunting information? Each publication has an in-depth analysis of draw odds, harvest statistics, and comments so that members can select the hunt that best fits their goals and needs. To find out more, go to HuntandFool.com. This segment is brought to you by PhoneScope, the future of digiscoping. Huntful always makes sure you have the right unit to hunt, accommodations, and the experienced guides you're looking for. Being able to have a good time is now up to Albert and his crew. I've been a member of the Hunting Fool for about 12 years, and um, you know, a guy like me from the East, I'm not into the normal conversations that happen here in the West. So you know, you read Hunting Fool pretty much tells you what areas to be applying for. They recommend certain things. Albert got my name I believe through the Hunt and Fool magazine and gave him my name and, and was able to talk and I was able to show him some pictures and, and at the area that we knew about and he got some referrals from people that I know and, and was able to book the hunt. If I did the math quick I got 288 but he might be a little better on this four than I put. What did you put on your bean? 26. What did you put on the four? Uh, 13. The team spots a potential shooter, and they try to size him up. And I got one ED8. I did, you know, I get 17 mass. Yeah, I don't think he's that massive. I just saw him quick and gave it to him. But, sorry, but I didn't give him anything on his, on his extra. That was just his frame. So if we get a little less on the mass, he's still 188. Albert Finney sits 100 yards from a large 5x4 mule deer, trying to decide whether or not to take a shot. Albert does not have a clear shot, so the team claps their hands in an attempt to get the deer to stand. But the deer looks away and stays bedded. Oh. 
Albert decides to walk slowly towards the deer, and that does the trick. me back one you know bigger deer than I that I've ever shot but for the area it's again it was a smaller smaller deer and you have to pass the small ones to be able to hunt the big ones first day I believe it was we had a deer that he wanted to shoot desperately it was a great deer anywhere else in the world for the unit we were in it, it was it was not a big deer This segment is brought to you by Scream Extreme Mountain Hunting Gear. Albert Finney, John, and Clay Bundy are hunting on the Arizona Strip. With so many world-class bucks in the area, Albert is having difficulty choosing which one to harvest. While for most hunters, this is a good problem to have. It's the last day of the hunt, and the team still has a tag to fill. Like wherever we looked, there was deer and, and bucks, and, and they were in a rut mode. They just seemed to to show up. You know, I spent a lot of time in the summer putting out trail cameras, and uh, we had deer show up that we hadn't seen before. What do you think? Yeah, it looks like a pretty good one. Let's get over here and get a better look at him. Still unsure. The team moves closer to the potential shooter. A final look confirmed that this was indeed a buck Albert wanted to harvest. With the help of all those eyes in camp, we knew where there was a deer bedded. We decided on one specific animal. Uh, it was about four o'clock in the afternoon. We went after that animal. With so many people in the crew, noise can be a problem. The buck hears something and stands up to take a look. Although the buck could break away at any moment, Albert wanted to make sure that this was a buck for him. After quickly glassing him one more time, he confirms that this is the buck he wants. snuck up to about 200 yards. Classic, you know, the deer got up from his bed, stood broadside, gave us an opportunity to, for a final look, and everyone decided this is the deer to take, and shot him. Deer dropped, it was a great That's awesome. hunt. Once we got up to the deer, it, you know, it was a, just a, a good conclusion to a great, great hunt. A great opportunity, we, Albert was able to look at him, make a decision, and decide to shoot him. And he, he got set up and shot, and that deer just went down hard. It ended up to be a great experience. It was a good deal. For you know a guy from the East Coast to come out west on a 
great mule deer hunt and have it documented with a, a TV show from the hunting pool is just a tremendous opportunity. And you know, the whole hunt from start to finish uh, was it was a you know great experience. Every hunter has a dream hunt, that one incredible trip that they've always wanted to experience. With patience, resilience, and the help offered through Hunt and Full Services, Albert was able to capitalize on the opportunity to make that dream a reality. The majestic terrain of the Arizona Strip produced yet another world-class mule deer. And after spending 15 years preparing for a shot, Albert was able to take it home. Closed captioning is brought to you by Real Trees Family of Patterns. Family, friends, and the outdoors.